Hello and welcome to the Extreme Hardware Podcast. Today, we've got uh, quite a few people lined up. We've got Alex, one of the uh, venerable hosts of the show. Hola. We've got uh, Simmons himself. Hello. We've got uh, our, our may or may not ghost in the shell, Andrews. Oh, you ruined it. You weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're running with it, buddy. You weren't supposed to respond, Andrew. <laughs> that was the thing. Beside the point. And also, we've got someone very special. Now, boys, I have a PC case. In fact, one could say I've got a few of them. But, uh, you know, there comes a point in life where you just want another one. And, and where do you go for that? Where would you go? You, you go to a manufacturer. And today we have one of those. Mr. Wynn. Mr. Wynn. Yes. Hello, Mr. Wynn. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Johnny with us from uh, Inwin. And uh, so, Johnny, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe? Um, why you're here, sort of, maybe about Inwin itself, or what your role is within Inwin? Okay, so uh, my name's Johnny, as you guys mentioned. I've been kind of dubbed Mr. Wynn, and I think I might roll with that. So... Uh, <laughs> I, I might go up to our EVP uh, to, tomorrow when I go into the office and be like, no, my name is not Johnny. It's Mr. Wynn. Get it right. And then I'll be subsequently fired. So <laughs> it's um, a power move. It's a power move. He'll respect you more. <laughs> no, but joking aside, a little bit about Inwin. Inwin is uh, best known as a case manufacturer. We also manufacture uh, power supplies as well as case fans. And we've been in the industry for over 30 years now. A lot of people, like, if you, eat, if you know, like, some of our luxury lineup, you've probably heard of us that way. Or if you've had, like, an older beige PC, kind of like the older ones that people are dubbing as retro now. So, um, <laughs> yeah, those, those ones, if you come across a beige PC case, th that was us. Yeah, that's Anybody uh, who looks at your cases, though, they'll immediately notice that they're it's even hard to put any descriptions on them because they're unlike anything out there. How do you even begin to describe in one's design philosophy? Oh, my gosh. So uh, our cases are, to say the least, one of the most unique cases on the market. You know, I'm not trying to tout our own horn here a little bit. It's a lot of times the way our designers kind of view our PC cases, it's more like, uh, you know, functional art rather than just a PC case. And that's exactly how we approach it, how we market it. You know, you're not just getting something that holds PC hardware. We want you to have something that's going to be, you know, the centerpiece of, you know, your room, whether it be an office space, you know, a gaming rig, you know, whatever it may be. We want, we want this to be like a really awesome experience for you. And that's ultimately what our designer goes for, is to do something new, something different, and, uh, yeah, basically stay away from trends. So that's why if people ask us, you know, why aren't you doing it like this? I'm like, well, because it's already been done. That's not us. We don't copy. So out of interest, actually, you're speaking of trends there. Am I right in saying that the Inwin 904 was one of the first cases with tempered glass? If not, it made it kind of mainstream? Ah, good point. So uh, we actually did develop the first PC case with tempered glass. However, it wasn't the 904. It was actually a little bit earlier than that. It was one of our first signature lineups, uh, our D-Frame. Okay. Our D-Frame had uh, the first tempered glass panels used on a case. And boy, if you if you go back to some of those articles, you you'd see like how much people would laugh at it. And now it's become such a standard in like PC cases, it's kind of funny to go back and look at some of those articles. Yeah, that's pretty great. Um, yeah, I mean, tempered glass is harder now to not find in a PC case. Mm -hmm. Are there, so, I mean, you guys are generally quite well known for innovation or trying new things, like you said, where other case manufacturers just want to stick with a tried and true formula. Are there any sort of um, features that you've put into cases or things that have been left on the design floor that haven't taken off as well as tempered glass, but you kind of wish did? Oof. Uh, so one of the things about doing something new, something different is exactly right. You know, there are some things that will catch on and 
you know, will absolutely, you know, stun the industry. And there are others where it's like, mm, maybe it didn't go as well as we had hoped. And I don't know if it's ever really been to the point where like we scrapped it because of, we didn't think we didn't have a lot of confidence in it. It was more along the lines of, you know, one of the things that we really want to make sure that happens with these designs is we want to make sure that, you know, the users end up having, you know, a, a an easier time building in our cases. And sometimes when we focus a lot on a certain area, other areas don't exactly match up. So um, that's one of the things that we kind of focused on was uh, – how this actually affects the user in the building process. So I'll give you an example. Uh, a couple of years ago, we displayed a couple of wooden cases that gathered a bunch of attention. And I, to this day, I still get a lot of requests. Well, when are these wooden cases coming out? Uh, we named one of them the 806 and the other, um, well, the other one was actually the A1, but instead of having a gla glass top panel, it was a wooden panel. So there's a few people that, uh, quite a few people that just really, really wanted these cases. And to be honest with you, I liked them too, because again, this was kind of something that you didn't really see a lot of unless you saw a mod, not necessarily a, a production case. But the more and more we looked into the matter and the more and more we tried to make this happen, the more we could see that this was probably not going to end well. So... <laughs> One of the things that we discovered was, you know, the the wooden cases, you have to worry about things like warping. You have to worry about things like uh, chipping, things like that. And also, you have to keep in mind that our headquarters is in Taiwan, which is a tropical environment. So you'd be shipping a, a case from a tropical environment like Taiwan and then moving it to other areas around the world you know, where we're from, from the, the U.S., it, it's going to cause some warpage. So rather than, you know, give, you know, our customers a kind of a hellish experience from uh, uh, an RMA standpoint, we decided it was just kind of best to, you know, do away with the idea as much as it hurt us because we, we really liked the idea and so did our customers. But sometimes there are some decisions behind the scenes that you really got to focus on because in the end it might damage more of your reputation if you let something like this happen yeah that that makes sense actually that wooden case would have gone really nicely with the uh, ek's new wooden lineup that they've released <laughs> i don't know if you've seen that true. it looks really cool and yeah I, I did actually that was a plan we were planning on like trying to do a partnership regarding that oh. But uh, then it did end up following through, uh, obviously, with the case, you know, kind of not coming out and everything. Yeah, which, which is definitely a shame. But you, like you said, the, the logistical standpoint really comes in and and yeah, it could absolutely throw a wrench in not just revenue, but company trust. Yeah. Uh, Trails are the most absolutely. interesting part, though, because if you got like right now, you've got, like you said, the trademarks and the troubles you have with wood but are there materials that you wanted to work with in the past that just weren't feasible to work with that you can now or is there a material that's right on the horizon that you know you're going to be able to do some crazy stuff with that just you can't right now so um basically we we've we're we're open to working with a lot of different materials and it's kind of it's kind of one of those things where you know it could end up you know, working out really well and then could, you know, end up being a flop. Unfortunately, the wood case version, uh, that was a little bit of a flop, but uh, we decided, you know, for the better of the customers and for ourselves that it was better to move on from that. However, that's not stopping us from trying different avenues. So during Computex this year, we also released a case that instead of using like the traditional temper glass, acrylic, uh, even steel, you know, side panels, we actually did something that has never been done before and started using a cloth pattern, uh, a cloth uh, cover instead of, you know, a traditional 
close case using steel or something like that. Yeah, I remember that. It's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was... It, it's actually kind of interesting receiving feedback on that because there were a lot of people that either really, really liked it and just said, shut up and give us uh, and take our money. And there were others that were like, you guys are stupid. <laughs> you know, there, there was like no in between. And, and, you know, that's fine. We're not, we're not, you know, against hearing different types of criticism because again, this is us. We're trying to be innovative. We're trying to do something different. And we realized that somewhere along the way it may work and maybe it won't. But in this case, we think we have a solid idea here because one of the things that we were trying to do is have like more of a customized option for our customers. So different things like um, having different cloth patterns, uh, different colors, you know, something that you really can't see. So, you know, one of the, one of the things I hear constantly on Twitter is things like, uh, in when can you make a, a hot pink case or a lime green case? And, and I'm like, sure. How many cases do you need? One? Uh, no, that's probably <laughs> not going to happen. Uh, yeah. So, and I get it. I get it because, you know, not everyone's a modder not everyone is willing to get their hands dirty like that. But at the same time, it's not easy for us because if we were to do that, we would, we wouldn't be in business for very long. You know, it's just, it's not, feasible for a company for any company to do something like that so well, we I thought to ourselves case with rgb i mean why is that so much to ask for <laughs> <laughs> well we'll get to that in a little bit but uh for <laughs> sure like uh the 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 cloth though kind of gives us this a little bit more flexibility to provide this type of option for our customers and it's actually feasible material to use in different forms and some people I, I think are missing the point when we provide these kind of cases. It might not be, you know, used for certain projects, but this is actually perfect for a lot of different things. It's perfect for like a first PC for, uh, for you know, a kid. Or if you just need like a, you know, home theater PC, I think that's a perfect opportunity for that. Something that can be a little bit more on the discrete side. So that's kind of like our angle with Alice, you know, using a different material with uh, um, things like uh, cloth. And then we have other materials that we're exploring too, like uh, our latest signature case, Jung. That one is made 3D printed, and it's one of the first uh, mass-produced. Uh, well, it's not mass-produced, but it's a produced case that's using 3D printing. The idea behind this too is to have a customizable case. So um, the story behind Yong is uh, Yong is actually Mandarin for um, chrysalis. So for the, mm -hmm. so like kind of like a cocoon for a moth or a caterpillar. Yeah, same, same idea there. And the art behind it is that no two Yongs are the same. So each you know, for those of uh, you that are actually going to purchase the Yong, you basically have the option to design it to the point where it's like, okay, I want this side a little bit bigger than this side. I want this to have a certain design. And I like that aspect of it. You can even change paint colors as well. So different things like that, we try to implement with our cases to you know, see, see what uh, we like about it. We evaluate afterwards if we, we want to continue down this road or maybe we want to try something else. That's the one thing we, we will always do is we'll always try and continue and innovate and provide a different experience for each of our customers. Yeah, that Young case actually looks really cool in terms of like just an art piece plus a computer case, really. Yeah, even, I was about to say, it, it looks more like something you'd see in an art gallery than in an office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely not uh, for for everyone. Like, this isn't something you just stick in your room or something. This is, this is designed to be like a centerpiece for like a business or uh, maybe if you collect fine art, this is a functional fine art piece. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have quite a few uh, of our signature lineup that's like that, like uh, our 
past Z tower is the same thing. That thing is heavy because it's <laughs> pure aluminum. Mm-hmm. When, uh, when I, dis- when we displayed it at CES earlier this year, oh my God, putting that thing on the platform, that was so heavy, <laughs> but you know, it was, it was so worth it though, because everyone just absolutely loved it. it drew in so many people. Uh, and yeah, absolutely. Things like that. We absolutely love to do to just kind of give you that wow factor for business or for whatever purpose you might have for it. it even if you just want it as like a, you know, showpiece for your own home. Yeah. And, and you know, go ahead. Simmons. Yeah. Sorry. I was going to say, yeah, going back to the Z tower and even the H frame from a couple of years ago is like, they're, they're, they're those halo products that you're maybe only a handful of people are going to buy, but when they buy them, this is going to be a, like a product investment. In, in a sorts like some people who collect like vehicles in a way you know because one of the things especially with the young that i didn't realize uh was that they were made to order and i think that's really Absolutely. fascinating from that perspective yeah it's it's uh something that we've always wanted to do and it's something that uh, our company has always aimed towards doing is having it so that again this is for our customers it's not you know it's not just something we just throw out there it's something that they made it something that they could be proud of and uh we absolutely love that aspect of it you when you come across like collectors of our signature cases like it's it's absolutely amazing like how they have essentially like a hall of fame of our cases and i'm like wow that's that's amazing because they find different ways to you know portray it and it's just i'm like wow i wish i was I I was able to, you know, do things like this too, because uh, (laughs) some of these cases, like, you know, we like not even our branch or even our headquarters don't even have these cases anymore just because they're that exclusive, like uh, our H tower. I love that, that thing. Uh, For for those of you who don't know, our H tower is our first uh, robotic case that opened with either a press of a button on the base or through an app. And it actually unfolded like a full, you know, 360 degrees to the motherboard plate. So it was just so satisfying just seeing this thing open and close. Like, I, I love it. And I, and I miss it from our office. We, we don't have it anymore. Yeah, I feel like that'd be something that you press a button on and, and, and walk by and just watch it do its thing and then keep moving. <laughs> Oh, I, I actually at CES, we had to, when we displayed it at CES one year, there was a, there was a man that was so enthralled by it. He just, just kind of like was so amazed. He was like, can you open it again? <laughs> yeah. You know, no big deal. So we, we opened it. So yeah, can you close it again? Sure. <laughs> sure. So we, so we do it again and he's like, can you open it again? I'm like, can, let's, let's give it a break. You know, this thing needs to last, you know, all. <laughs> I'll see yes, you know, because while we do, we are confident in our products and everything that on how long it, it'll, you know, the longevity of it is. But realistically speaking, when you take this home, you're not going to be opening and closing it like 800 times a day. So, uh, well, maybe I'm having this guy. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, maybe the first day, <laughs> but like when you're doing this for like nearly a week, it's like, okay, we, we got to stop, you know, opening and closing it so much. So, so uh, speaking of the case design uh, philosophy, so one of the things that I've actually been really curious about is um, as um, the cases have been becoming more modern, you know, temper glass is now kind of the standard for high end. Um, I've noticed that there have been some features that have actually been phasing out. Um, which I can understand at least five and a quarter inch uh, drives, why those aren't present on cases anymore. But uh, one of the things that baffles me the most is, uh, at least on a couple of the high iron cases that I have seen, and there might be some products in your inventory that you have that addresses this, but um, is high end cases losing the bulk three and a half inch uh, hard drive storage support? Um, I remember when I was first getting into computers, admittedly, it wasn't that long ago. So around 2012, 2013, um, the high end cases, they, they, one of the big touting features of them was either like 10 uh, hard drive bays or 12 hard drive bays, or you have dedicated storage for your three and a half. And then here's a tower or a stack of uh, drive bays for two and a half as SSDs becoming, it became more common. 
And it seems like just the industry standard right now is uh, you get three drives for your computer and that's it. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, we, we tend to see, we tend to see things like that just kind of, you know, fizzle out after a while. And it's, it's really weird because you think of this as, as something that you, you absolutely need, but when, when it comes down to it, because of how things are so rapidly, you know, improving and, you know, changing, some of the things aren't as necessary as they used to be. I mean, I'll give you an example, you know, about 10, 15 years ago, how feasible was it to get a terabyte hard drive? That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way. And now it's like, that's nothing. You can, you can easily get like a four terabyte hard drive, no problem. And and it's not even the 3.5 inch anymore. You can get a 2.5 inch now. And that's Mm -hmm. kind of where it's going is like the 3.5 inch is just, not as in demand as it used to be. It's there. Don't get me wrong. It's not completely fizzled out, which is why in a lot of our products, we still uh, try to include the 3.5 inch drive, just depending on what it is. We're talking about like a mini ITX case. We might look more towards away from, you know, including spaces for 3.5 inch and more for like 2.5 inch. It's just, it's just uh, not something as important as it once was. Still important, like I said, like uh, myself included, like I still use the, uh, the 3.5 inches here and there. But um, again, it's just not necessary to have like the 10 hard drives anymore. You know, you have more uh, space available now. It's just getting to the point where it will eventually be obsolete just when that happens we're not entirely sure so until that happens we'll always try and implement it but for now this is more along the lines what we're trying to do is you know make create a happy medium you know sure create more space for what's needed and less for you know what's not as needed anymore kind of like the um you know the optical disk drives Sure. And, he, and I guess my philosophy on it, right, is, and I, I know it might be a little bit more, you know, personal for me, but when I, w- when I was shopping for my last case, um, the big thing for me was I used um, five and a quarter inch bay for a hot swap bay. I had my hard drives in the front of my case because I like that feature. Uh, now the five and a quarter bays are basically dead, uh, which is kind of a shame. Um, you lose those options, but then there was also the fan controllers that you could have built into the front of your case uh, in the five and a quarter slot. Um, or, I mean, just just a few months ago, I was uh, I was given a project where they had like say a fifteen hundred dollar budget, and they demanded that they have their DVD drive for whatever reason. So now I have to recommend a case that's probably five ten years old at this point to be able to fill that niche. And I know as things evolve the availability of these older cases is going to diminish. So I, I don't know. It, it, it just kind of strikes me kind of weird that some, or there is still a need for some of these. I know at least in the home server world, that stuff is absolutely still necessary. But um, I know in the, it, it's hard to compete with how the trends are going, I guess. I, I don't know. It, it's, it's hard to uh, frame this uh, observation. It's like, no, give me this. I need it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, to the other side of the argument there, with specifically with five and a quarter inch drives, like I couldn't wait until that disappeared because for me, I never used them. And I, if I needed a DVD drive, I had an external one. Sure. And um, I really wanted that space for radiators at the front of my case. And, and it was I, really I, annoying seeing a case that's like perfect for water cooling radiator at the front. And then it's got two five and a quarter inch at the top, which could have been, you know, an extra 120 mil slot. So it's just kind of, yeah, as trends yeah. change. I mean, we don't have a turbo button anymore, you know, Pentium. Darn. Three days. <laughs> oh, geez. Wow, we're going we're way back with the turbo button. Yeah. I was going to... Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. If I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in a shameless plug, if I may. Uh, so, so one of the things, you know, I... I, this is actually kind of a an argument that I hear a lot when I go to trade shows and when I'm just talking to anyone on the phone or whatever. When they when they're looking for something specific like that, when they want things like the 
the you know optical disc drives or something with more hard drives or something that has more radiator support. That's one of the things that I absolutely love about in win cases. You know, bias much I know, but <laughs> but uh, the uh, the cool thing about our lineup is that we have something for everybody, and for somebody that wants things like uh, the more disc drives because uh, we have people that will request, well, I need three optical disc drives. I need like 10, I need, I need like 10 hard drives, 3.5 inch preferably, you know, sure. and that's, that's really hard to find now because it's just not the norm anymore. Mm -hmm. However, one of the things I always suggest is rather than looking for like the retail PC cases, we, we uh, recommend things like some of our server chassis, you know, it, and when, when you think of server chassis, I know you think of like the, the large bulky things that belong on rack mounts. Yes. <laughs> that's not, that's not necessarily just server uh, chassis. There are technically server chassis or pedestals as some people call them, you know, that look just like any other PC case, just um, instead of focusing on like things like gaming, like the, the RGB aspect of it, they focus more on the the different features, the, all the bells and whistles, like the optical disk drives, like the the hard drives, and that's that's exactly what they need. And if they really want to, they can put in some RGB if they absolutely want to. But uh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Every server, you know, we have something for everyone. No, that no, that's interesting. I mean, I just I just uh, did a quick search and I found the the MSO8, and this is really interesting. 8 bay yeah, TX. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that's a great option if you're looking for something not as big. That's kind of our I think our mini pedestals, I think we call it. Sure. Uh that's uh that's something if you don't want it to be too ridiculously big, but you still need all that all the bells and whistles that come along with it, that's a perfect option. So that's what I'm saying. It doesn't necessarily have to uh, be something that's like the gamer norm where you have like the tempered glass, where you have like the RGB. It can if you want, but, um, <laughs> you know, there, there are great options out there. It's just um, you just got to look at different avenues like the server uh, pedestal towers, things like that. And then so, speaking of legacy hardware, there was one other question I wanted to ask. Uh, so so you, I, obviously I voiced my grievances with things that have phased out. Is there any uh, features uh, from, from ye old days of uh, gaming hardware uh, that you think is just missing from the modern center? I mean, I brought up five and a quarter and three and a half, but um, also like cable locks or, or computer case locks that were, that were just built in for the, for the land gaming scene. Is there anything along those lines that you think might be missing? Ooh, um, in a lot of ways, I kind of like how the trends have been going. Like I, I like how that, I, I basically like how things have been phasing out like the optical disc drives, because I'm kind of with you in, in the sense where I don't, necessarily need them anymore and if i do i could use an external but i guess if i had to pick one thing i would say the fact that things are kind of getting a little too compact for my taste i like the larger pc cases like yes. the uh the full yes. towers yes that's for me personally i like that and i understand that not everyone will and that's fine but um for me i i just kind of enjoy you know, seeing the quality of a larger tower. So that's more along the lines what I miss, but yes. it, it's not that important, honestly. You know, I, I could still roll with the mid tower. And to tell you the truth, um, my personal uh, PC is a mid tower. So fair enough. There, there you have it. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, my personal PC is I've been ro rocking Q cases over the last three iterations of it. So I am no, I am absolutely familiar with getting oversized PCs for the hell of it. <laughs> so, so you mentioned your own personal PC. What do you use that for right now? Because you're around some of the most hardcore gaming cases, but you've also got a bunch of regular cases. Where do you fall on that? Are you a hardcore gamer? Are you more casual? 
I would love to say that I'm a hardcore gamer, but I'd be totally lying. Because, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have as much time to do uh, gaming as much as I'd like to. And there are some awesome games that I'd like to get to. I mean, Borderlands 3 just came out. And I have not had an opportunity to even look at a trailer at it, much less, you know, play the game. So most of what I do with with my PC is I just, uh, I basically just use it for basic needs, I guess you could say. I do uh, I do some podcasting on, on the side as well. So I kind of use it for, as a podcast studio, so to speak. But that's basically it so nothing too strenuous or anything like that uh the case that i use is our 805 i i actually love our 805 case and uh might have uh might bring that up a little bit later but the uh the n1 805 is a gorgeous tempered glass case as soon as that case came out i'm like i have to have it it's just it's too gorgeous and I uh, I don't care if I'm coming off as a as a fanboy or whatever. Oh, but, who would have um, it, it, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a gorgeous case. I had to have it. So, so, are you referring to the standard variant or the Infinity variant? Good point. So we do have an Infinity variant, as you mentioned. Uh, I personally have the standard because of the fact. While I love the Infinity look. I think it's too much RGB for my personal taste. That's not a thing. Uh, no thing is too much RGB. I got. Yeah, I got. Don't, you can ignore that. Frick. <laughs> Frick is RGB you know, but, crazed. Man's talking crazy. Fine, on my you know, I, now. It's, we can't allow this. <laughs> <laughs> I just been kicked off. <laughs> no, I mean, I I could totally understand why like uh, people go with RGB, you know, and they go. To the point where like it's it's like a a rave inside your pc and that's awesome i love that i think it looks cool but for me to work with that i i'm i think i'm good for that you know i (laughs) yeah i I, I like a little bit of rgb because i do have some rgb fans in in my pc as well but i think that's as far as i'll go like i don't want to have like a rgb mouse pad or you know (laughs) rgb ram or things like that i think that that's okay it looks nice but not for me i was gonna say remind me not to send you a photo of my keyboard uh with the oh, anime, yeah. like, <laughs> like show going on right now no no yeah. but but I, aside from the keyboard it's like i've got the rgb water block and it's got a single led and it's been the same color ever since i built the s- system <laughs> <laughs> well there you go you know and that's so. that's the other thing too is i, I like uh, something that has like a really nice central color theme like I, I really appreciate the people that put a lot of time into like a, a thematic build like uh like an all black or an all white build i think it looks really nice yeah. and classy yeah so yeah no, no not too much rgb for me i appreciate yeah. that <laughs> I'm, I'm like the complete opposite i mean i had an old um p8 p67 board with one led on it and uh i taped over that like oh, thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's just like no lights nothing see it's um, one of the words if it's night and you've got this really bright led it, it almost makes it worse if it's just one because it's more irritating yeah. and it's a really really yeah, old yeah, it's like one of those old cheap one cent LEDs as well. It was so weird. Like, I just did that. Well, I mean, I remember like my Wi-Fi card. I mean, I've got a, I've got a 24-hour computer. And when my computer used to be in my bedroom, um, I put some duct tape over the LED on the Wi-Fi card because a blue flashing LED in the middle of the night is just oh, yeah. wonderful for, for falling asleep <laughs> too. No, it's not. <laughs> so, uh, Johnny, you mentioned full tower cases a little bit previously. And I'm also like a huge fan of full tower cases. I bought the 800D when it came out and that was kind of a mistake. Um, I've noticed that (laughs) they're kind of disappearing. Like as someone who I have some very large radiators and found out that hardware labs does 153 mil radiators when they say they're 140. So that's fun. But they are, what do you think about the trend essentially that full tower cases are disappearing? And in turn, open loops, I feel, are diminishing. 
Do you feel it's, like uh, it's it just, it's interesting? Yeah. Do you think that maybe not Inwin or just other companies aren't they're just not making money from it? Essentially, people aren't buying it. Well, what it is, it's it's the trend. It, you know, people want to they want to basically get more compact. They're um, in fact one of our our most popular case right now is. You know, we call it a mini ITX, but honestly, it feels smaller than that. It's called uh, the N1 Chopin. And that one is, I think, only about eight liters big. Oh, boy. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, seriously, we, we have a picture next to a Coke bottle, and the Coke bottle's towering it. Like, it's it's a really tiny PC. And mind you, you can't do a whole lot, like, if you were to, say, compare it with the full tower, of course, because you're you know you're limited in space of what you what you can do but the point is like you can actually build you know a a decent pc system in it and you know you can even game a little bit in it is it going to be the best gaming pc ever probably not if you compare it to like a full tower but um the fact that it's kind of getting to that level is kind of where the the pc uh, case manufacturers are going is okay we understand that you want to go smaller more compact so this is our answer for this request you know and mid towers i think will always be kind of the more popular because you could still do a lot with the you know less space than like a full tower so in my opinion mid towers will always kind of be you know around you know in the pc industry but um yeah, the the smaller and more compact things are getting, the more, you know, our, our end will also get smaller and more compact. So that's more or less the reason why things are getting more smaller. And it's a little disheartening for me because I, I appreciate more the full tower builds. The you, you brought up some of the, you know, water cooling aspects of it too. It's kind of nice seeing that, especially when you get that accomplished and everything looks all solid and everything. But that's sort of dying in a way, too, because, again, the PC cases are, you know, getting smaller and slimming down. Yeah. I think the biggest part when it comes to portability, though, and this is something that you guys might want to jump on, because the second I saw this, we just I just looked up some photos of it. All I could think of is I want to see an in-win backpack PC for VR gaming so bad now. I didn't realize that much <laughs> before, but now that I've seen this, I'm like, why have you guys not done that? Why? <laughs> a backpack PC. We, we, you know, there, there have been like internal discussions about different concepts that have never left. I don't know if I'm allowed to reveal all of that. That's so fine. I will. Okay. World exclusive. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to reveal any of that. But um, yeah, there, there are certain things that we've you know, thought about in the past and have even gotten into at least somewhat of the planning stage. But there are, there are certain things that we always look out for, you know, certain outliers that will prevent us from actually doing something like that. But um, it, I, think, uh, I think it's fair to say that this is something that has kind of come, come, come up before. You know, we've kind of came up with the idea of, you know, this might be a... This might be a good idea, but whether or not it's feasible or something that we think we should do, that's a totally different story. Oh, you should. And uh, that's the end of the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it here for, first, folks. You know, we should, we should absolutely do that idea and uh, watch out for CES. <laughs> oh, uh, and I have to ask you: is the Frick Frock is now an in-win R and D employee. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole purpose of all this. So yes, it was bound to happen. <laughs> I have to ask you: the uh, in-win Winbot sort of—I don't know how else to describe it—but the hamster ball case. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Please, <laughs> please tell me that you can actually detach that from the base and roll it around. <laughs> yeah, the funny thing really is case. i've heard so many different people say oh this needs to be a pokeball mod or a gyrosphere <laughs> mod you know the, <laughs> the little ball from jurassic world yeah, yeah, yeah. The, we've heard so many of that before and 
Actually, hamster ball, I don't know if I've heard before. So <laughs> someone should put a hamster. No, don't put a hamster in. I think that might be a bad idea. <laughs> that might be a bad idea. <laughs> I, I can't. I have to make sure I don't say. I have to say that you know, don't put a hamster in it because I just know there's somebody out there listening that's gonna try and do that. You know, put a ham hamster inside of a wind bot. But oh, um, Mr. Wind uh, said that this was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be Inevitable surprised, you know, some people, case, wouldn't it? The world's first <laughs> lawsuit against a case manufacturing for advocating hamster RGB. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Peter's not listening, right? Oh boy, <laughs> probably not. But, uh, it. <laughs> but yes, the, to answer your question, yes, you can actually detach the uh, the the sphere of of the uh, windbot from the base. I don't know if it's a good idea to roll it around, but you can, <laughs> in theory, do that. <laughs> <laughs> so something I've also wanted to ask, I mean, with a lot of like this, that the wind bot and like the Z tower and um, cases along those lines, they're more artistic pieces. They're more show pieces, et cetera, not focusing on performance and features and stuff like that primarily. And then, um, in general, actually, I don't know where I was going with that specifically, but in general, a lot of criticism has come to cases, especially last year, with restricting airflow quite heavily in terms of aesthetics. I know Gamers Nexus went a bit off the deep end in terms of basically wanting every case to just be a skeleton frame. But <laughs> how do you guys kind of manage the sort of balance between aesthetics of, you know, tempered glass RGB, making everything very slick and fit, uh, well fitted together versus cooling performance. So cooling performance is something that every builder is going to be concerned about, obviously. And one of the things that we do is there are cases that we make, especially for, you know, cooling. And there are cases that we we have in place that are more towards the aesthetic point, you know, something that is, you know, especially if you're if you're not doing anything, you know, particularly harmful or particularly, uh, you know, uh, overpowering. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, if you're just looking, you know, at the internet, you don't really need to worry about cooling, honestly. Mm. but there is an there is a fine line where you have to consider both the you know uh cooling aspect of the case and the aesthetics because we don't want to create something that's just going to be a box essentially and we also don't want it to be a hot box mm. so this is a, a tough question to answer because it just depends on the type of person you are if you are somebody that really harps on having the lowest possible temperatures that you can have, then there are certain cases I wouldn't recommend to you from our lineup and from other case manufacturer lineups. And there are also, um, you know, cases out there that we make that I'd say, you know what, I got what you need. But mm -hmm. some people just kind of take things a little too far saying, well, this is just a fraction of a temperature off compared to what this case could do. And, and you know, you hear it all the time. And I'm like, well, what's the huge difference exactly? Like, if it's, if it's like a degree off, I'd, I'd fail to see where that's, you know, you know detrimental yeah. to your PC. But um, ultimately, one of the things we do do is, uh, I said do-do. <laughs> but uh, the, one of the things we do do is uh listen to uh you know our reviewers one of the reasons why we send our our cases to pc reviewers is to get their feedback too it isn't just to create exposure it's to hear what they have to say some things we will agree with them absolutely like okay you know they bring up a fair point let's work on this let's you know make make a a better uh change for our future products Others, I'm like, mm, I don't know if we can, we can, you know, follow exactly what you're saying here, but maybe we can apply something that's a little bit similar to what you're talking about. 
that's yeah, one so, thing I think. Yeah, I'll that's go. one thing people really need to uh, um, realize is while we can't implement every single suggestion about um, our our products, we can certainly consider it and implement them on different products in the future. You know, so, some will tell me, well, why didn't you do that now? The product's already made, dude. I can't change it now. <laughs> you right. know, so things like that. So on the on the on the the whole concept of feedback, I, it's really interesting when you're giving out your product to reviewers, people who you know are enthusiasts. You're gonna get back all kinds of feedback, right? And like you said, some of it is uh, you know, some of it's good, some of it's questionable. Have you ever gotten a piece of feedback where you were just flabbergasted by it? You're like, what? I, you're almost at a loss for words from it. And you don't have to out anybody. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't out. Like, what is the most ridiculous slash petty feedback you've gotten? No <laughs> naming, no names. Oh, uh, there's so many. And, uh, <laughs> there, I, don't get me wrong. Like, there are a lot of good points out there. And there's like, well, why didn't you do that? And, you you know, you get to thinking like, you know what? That That is a good idea. And then there are others you're like, well, if we don't do that, you know, the, you, you don't have a case, dude. <laughs> like, um, like, for example, I had a, a, a customer um, tell me one time, they told me that um, the case shouldn't have, uh, you know, steel, it should all be plastic. Oh, and I was, right. <laughs> I was like, uh, are, are you, wait, what? And I thought <laughs> I heard him wrong. I go, do, do you mean do you think we have plastic and it should be steel? And he goes, no, no, no. You have steel and it's too heavy. So <laughs> make it plastic. And, I, I, and I'm thinking, I'm like, wait, wait. So you want the entire case to be plastic? You know, just, and I, and I, because, you know, plastic cases do exist. And, you know, some of them are good. But, like. You got to be a little more specific. Why, why plastic? And, and they're like, we just need the lightest material possible. This needs to be paper thin. This way it's easier to to transfer. I want to be able uh, to poke my finger through it. (laughs) uh, And that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, Oh, so you want this to be paper thin. Do you realize that if you just grip the side of this case, it's going to (laughs) break. If, if, Like, I, I don't get the thought process there. And, you know, you it sounds so simplistic and so, well, kind of dumb. But, <laughs> but um, you know, I get things like that all the time. And like I said, it's it's not everyone because there's a lot of solid points. And I, I'll, I'll even admit it to someone when they tell me, you know, you should do this. You're absolutely yeah, right. I was about to ask, what's the most uh, encouraging or positive thing that you've heard recently where you've re well, what's the most, the best piece of feedback you've heard recently that you've actually integrated into your products? I think one of the most, uh, one of the most encouraging aspects of, of our feedback that we receive is um, some, actually I'll give you a direct quote. Somebody literally like sent us like a page long message on our social media. This thing was like, they wrote like two or three pages. I'm not even joking. I'm like, can you put this on a review? Because this is awesome. (laughs) But they basically thanked us for our innovative thought process. They're like, I appreciate the fact that you're trying to be different and that you take risks and that you do things that are above the norm. And because of that, not only do I use your cases, but I, you know, I also build PCs on the side and every single one of, you know, the PC cases that I use for my customers are your cases. And, you know, to hear things like that, to, to hear that, you know, you're being innovative, that you're being different, that's something that makes all of us feel good because that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to be different. We're trying to do better than what we can possibly do ourselves. So we, we go above our own standards and that's to me, the biggest compliment you could ever give us is that you appreciate what we do. 
Yeah, right. You're right. And that's great. Um, what I meant was like, was there any one specific piece of advice where you're like, oh, this is a great idea. Let's integrate this oh. and push forth with it. Okay. So one great piece of advice that we always get is I feel like um, something that all case manufacturers struggle with, with certain products. And that is um, finding the right uh, balance of use usable space because when you're developing a pc case it's very challenging because you have to utilize a lot of space in a smart and effective manner so in some of our cases we have gotten some uh, criticism in the past where you know they're like you could have probably used this space a little bit more effectively and um that's that's something i think is critical for for all case manufacturers out there is to um, utilize the open space you have available. And sometimes there, there's a reason for it. It's just not that possible. And the other times it's like, you know, that was an oversight on our part. Let us correct that. Yeah. makes sense. Makes sense. Space management. So you guys are also quite well known for using a large amount of aluminum in your cases. How much is that or sort of the tariffs? I know with case labs, it was kind of the final nail in the coffin. How much has that affected you guys, if at all? Uh, to tell you the truth, not at all, really. Uh, is it just because you're exporting it, it, the final product to America only? Yeah. So basically how this works is it, it has it affected us a little bit. You know, there are certain things that... Um, there's certain things we make that the, we can't avoid the tariffs, but a lot of things that we do make as our cases being one of them, all of that's kind of made and manufactured in Taiwan. So mm -hmm. the tariff at the moment isn't really necessarily harming us because a lot of the tariffs that are, you know, harming other businesses is, um, you know, basically from China, you know, from China, basically to the U S from the U.S. to China, that kind of incorporation. For us in particular, since we design and manufacture in Taiwan, it actually is avoided, believe it or not. So, wow. um, so that's why, like our cases, like if if you compare them to like other, like other case manufacturers, you'll see like some of the case man manufacturers, their products have jumped up a little bit. And they might continue to jump up depending on how reliant they are for Chinese manufacturing. But for us in particular, our prices have overall stayed the same because we don't need to increase because of the tariff is not really directly affecting us. So that's kind of why like some of our, you know, products that aren't, you know, like our signature series, like our, um, you know, some of our affordable lineup, like our 101, our 303, that's one of our top sellers because it's still a really good chassis. It's still something that is screens quality and at an affordable price. So um, to go back to the question, does the tariff really affect us? A little bit, but not as, but not at all like what you might think. That's Fair pretty enough. good. Yeah. So that's I actually did have another question uh, in regards to some of the more unique cases you do. So one of our other um, hosts, he's not able, he wasn't able to make it today, but he was he was going to ask about uh, more of the the novelty cases. So uh, one of the ones that he brought up specifically was the train case. Um, do you know of anything in the works that is just it, it's clearly or unlike the the Yong where it's it's definitely an art piece like an abstract art piece. uh do you know of anything that might potentially be in the works that you are permitted to talk about that has an intentional design to look like something that's absolutely not a pc case Ooh, um what am i allowed to talk about uh, <laughs> okay so what am i not so, getting for yeah right <laughs> basically um so i do think that our that you and our audience should stay tuned for CES because there's going to be a case that well is exactly how you just asked right now 
and uh, <laughs> it it doesn't look like a PC case as it does. Uh, well, something really impressive. So uh, that's about okay. all I can tell you. I'll probably be killed for this anyway. But uh, <laughs> well, we, we appreciate your contribution. <laughs> but um, yeah, probably the the most current product that doesn't exactly look like a PC case would be our Young. Yeah. You know, again, this is something that looks absolutely nothing like a PC case, and the inspiration did draw from a chrysalis. So things like that we we do a lot of and you know we do have our the stereotypical you know cases that we try and look a little bit more different than just a box but um there there are quite a few cases we have like one of the probably my favorite case of all time just looks like an absolute art piece and that's the S frame that yeah. was another one that's just art like you look at this case and it's it just screams art. It doesn't scream, you know, like PC case. And I love that aspect about it, you know. And that's that's probably an element that's not going to go away anytime soon within Win. Fantastic. I mean, because I, I always go back to something like the D frame, where in my mind the D frame is something just it's this looks like it was built purely for functionality, but with some flair. It's like a roll cage from like it, a like a exactly or something. I mean, I know when I'm shopping for hardware, it's like it's like okay, so let's go for the functionality first, and then we'll go for the form next. And the D frame, if it wasn't so expensive um, at the time it came out, I would have probably had one just because. Yep, there's could be no airflow restrictions on this thing, and it still <laughs> looks like a case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, no, uh, no airflow issues there for sure. <laughs> Out of interest, so how much? sort of influence i mean obviously with the chrysalis is kind of a chinese word for chrysalis and stuff you got inspiration from that how much taiwanese inspiration or culture would you say is there in your signature cases or have there been in your signature cases i would say a, a good number um what has a lot of uh, taiwanese influence i would say just because a lot of them draw inspiration from certain aspects, like you you mentioned the the Yong case being uh, inspired by a chrysalis for the H Tower, the one that opens up. Believe it or not, that actually drew inspiration from a lotus flower. Okay, oh, that makes sense. It's it's actually kind of interesting because when I see that case, I'm not thinking of a lotus flower because of how you know how rugged this thing is. It's really, it's, it's, you know, really thick aluminum that opens up. But when you think about it, that's basically what a, what a, you know, Lotus flower does. It opens up, maybe not aluminum, but you get the idea. Yeah. Yeah. You know okay. what that word means exactly? That word thick you just said? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thick? Wait, what kind <laughs> of thick are we talking about? <laughs> oh, well, I mean. So, well, kind of specifically the spe about. spelling with two C's. <laughs> ah, okay. Not thinking of PC cases when I think about that, but okay. Hey. So we have to mention this. Um, a prominent AMD GPU manufacturer recently called one of their graphics cards the uh, the Thick Ultra with uh. two Cs. Oh. Um, I don't know if you've seen this, but they've been getting some mixed reviews on it because of sort of it being rather expensive and cooling, you know, badly. Um, <laughs> something I found kind of interesting is their response to it was rather negative. Um, and a, uh, a representative from said company was, you know, said reviewer is persecuting us. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of wanted to uh, ask, what would your take be on that? Do you, could you ever see Inwin even doing that? Like, I don't <laughs> know. It marketing seems rather un <laughs> yeah, it seems rather unprofessional to kind of blame the it's, reviewer for that. It's it's kind of uh, interesting because, uh, especially with marketing, there's like a it's it's hard to really measure what's appropriate and what's not because marketing in general could be a tactic, even if it's a little bit inappropriate or unprofessional. So it's just finding that delicate balance of, okay, I can get away with this sounding a little risque, but not, 
you know, going to, because like, even mm. with us, you know, we, uh, whenever we have a case that we really like, we can't help but say, this is a sexy case. I don't know mm. if I'd necessarily call it a thick case, but that's, <laughs> that's uh, beside the point. Um, it, it, I guess it depends a lot on timing, the best time to say something like that. And, um, you know, just overall, like how you say it, because a lot of times you're finding that that right balance isn't easy. And what sounds good in your head and like a good idea in your head at first may not necessarily be true in the end result. So again, I, I don't want to fault anyone there just because I can understand why they're thought they're thinking on this, but, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's tough. Marketing could be, could be tough. I'll say. So there's also yeah. a bad publicity, right? Cause even we're still talking about it. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that's a good true. point. Yeah. Cause I mean, um, was it Yeston created a Wang Wang, uh, graphics card? I don't know if you've seen it, but I mean, graphics cards in general are like, you know, they're all trending towards black gamer, RGB, edgy looking. And then Yeston, which is a Chinese company, comes out with a graphics card that looks like a blue and pink dog. And <laughs> it's, it's meant for, you know, just very Chinese market. It's an RX 580, I think, like a cut down 580, very specific. But tons of YouTubers are now picking up on it because it's so different and it's, it's cute, you know? So, yeah, I, I'm guessing, I don't know, that's kind of like a marketing... I don't want to say dream, but just for people to pick it up something because it's, it's different. It's interesting than the usual. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's a fair assessment too, is, uh, you know, is kind of suggesting also like different markets will appreciate different things. And same thing with, with, uh, with us too, for, um, the particular Asian region, we noticed that they love a lot of our gold cases. However, if you, you know, look at uh, America, they don't have the same passion for gold cases. And that's just, it's just kind of those things where like, it, it might seem weird and, and uh, you know, just it doesn't make sense or it's like a dumb idea in one region, but in another region, it's gold to them. So, mm. you know, they absolutely love it. So, the, yeah. Sorry. On the topic of like different regions wanting different things, have you been restricted by something like you think this was a great idea? It's going to be really cool, but you know that that region or in general, people just don't want that right now. Like they, they want RGB tempered glass, et cetera, but you want to come out with something different and you sadly know it won't sell. Do you hold those back or do you just release them anyway? Some things we will just, you know, release because other regions, because no matter what, uh, our, our company has to, has to support all regions. So there might be, you know, something that comes out where I'm like, uh, I don't really get this. It doesn't make sense to me, but it'll be a top seller in another region. So in a way we, we just kind of have to, you know, roll with the punches here and hope for the best. Uh, personally, one of the things that I'll never understand is particularly in the U S region, uh, not too many colors are a big thing. Like mm. we, we've released cases that are, that have, you know, colors to them and they just don't move as well as like some of our black cases, the traditional black case is ultimately what people love in the U.S. Uh, white cases are starting to gain popularity, but there was a there was a time where white cases weren't exactly that popular either. And the reason there's a there's a couple reasons for that. One of them being that other components are starting to become different colors, not just black, mm -hmm. which is why the black cases are still popular. But um, yeah, things like that just. You know, I, there are some things I wish that would become popularized in in uh, the U.S., but just simply aren't. You know, so I was one, actually kind of surprised that uh, gold cases didn't make a push here in the states, um, especially when like the Titan V came out. They, I believe that was the, the gold GPU. If, yeah, correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, but like you know, you now have some other piece of gold hardware, 
hey, let's find a case to match this. But then, I, then again, some people were buying these graphics cards to put in their already built systems. So then there's also that aspect. <laughs> yeah, I think that's quite hard. Like almost all things will come in a variant of black plus RGB. Right. And I think trying to find, you know, easily a motherboard and then air cooler or water cooler plus graphics card plus sometimes power supply and RAM that'll fit your gold and black themed build can be a lot harder and is, you know, more expensive. Like the G skill diamond R um, RGB RAM is Ugh, ridiculous. One trend that I actually really like, and I know Inwin does it and Case Labs did it before they disappeared. You guys actually make different fan grills at the back. I have no idea why this annoys me so much, <laughs> but <laughs> like the fan grills on every single case that hex grid is, it annoys me for no reason that it's like extra restrictive and really boring to look at because <laughs> I look at the back of my case all the time because that's where it is. But yeah, <laughs> that, that, like, that is a trend I wish would actually catch on more because you can put a lot of interesting designs there for nothing. It's just tooling really. And uh, I think it'd be pretty cool to do. Anyway, Frick, I believe you had a question you were burning to ask. I had to know, because right now we're at a point where you can just have, in terms of techno technological advancement, everybody, and I mean everybody, wants to stand out in some way. Because so many people have like the same homogenized, similar, same looking things, right? Everyone wants a chance to stand out. So what you were saying about making something for like a smaller scale market that might not necessarily blow up, but that smaller market really, really likes this particular thing. The Xiaomi, the Mi Mix Alpha phone that they just announced, this full screen wraparound phone, I'm not gonna lie, is probably <laughs> one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen in my life, but it's also $3,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was at that, and I was this just thinking to myself, this thing, I mean, if we can get this technology and trickle it down to something, you know, more every day, I can totally see, you know, like what you just said, something that's so niche become a lot more mainstream. I mean, I, we just sent you the link in the chat. This thing is stunning. I, I don't like it, honestly. Oh, I was gonna say, <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind is drop resilience. <laughs> how, yeah, how do you use a How do you put a case on a phone that's meant to be touched all over? <laughs> I mean, the case is going to look like a D-brand skin on this, around the camera, and that's it. <laughs> you know? Uh, it's interesting. Like, I, I really appreciate the moves that they're making with these flexible displays, but I don't think they're doing it the right way. <laughs> yeah, these, the flexible displays are also plastic from what I've seen, which well, is um, <sighs> scary. Well, I mean, I mean, that was one of the big things when OLED came out, right? Is like, it, it's, it can actually be bendable. And yeah. that's great for, say, like displays or marketing or stuff along those lines. And it makes sense. But on a full wraparound phone, uh, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Also, it doesn't have five cameras on it. I'm mad. <laughs> it has 105 megapixels. That's not enough. <laughs> Wait, what? It's a 105 megapixel phone. Why? Because oh the screen is a oh the screen itself oh no what you no, 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 I, I, no 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 the the camera itself is 108 megapixels I'm sorry what? why <laughs> okay all right now we just need selfie cameras on computer cases be perfect right. well I mean the specs uh, well technically we got that wait really <laughs> yeah in our windbot we have a. Uh... We have a camera on, on the Winbot that you can use. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Oh, yeah. There's a little webcam in the middle of it. Yeah. One thing actually I quite <laughs> like about uh, which cases it has it, but the, the programmable front with all the different um, RGB sections. Oh, yeah. Um, I, what was that at CES uh, this year? I oh, think. the uh, 309? Is it the 309 with the programmable front? Like it's got, yeah. um, I think, 128 different sections. That is actually really cool. And I went to put Tetris on it. <laughs> I'm surprised <laughs> something like I'm surprised something like that hasn't caught on. Like, it will. Well, 
the Infinity case, I remember when that came out, that was a huge, like a lot of people talked about it and it does look really cool. And I'm sure, I mean, a lot of people really liked it, but no one else adopted it. It's, I find that weird because well, it's not super crazy expensive or complex to do. See, I don't think that's accurate because from, from at least from the, the traditional case vendors that we know, no, I didn't see that anywhere. But I did see several uh, pre-built system providers. Uh, specifically, there was one based out of the DC area. And then I saw another one. Oh, was it Origin PC or something like that? I, I don't oh, quote yeah. me on that. But they had the Infinity, uh, the Infinity front. Admittedly, it looked like that they just took a taped on... Um, RGB strip and put it in the Infinity case, so it didn't look as elegant, but it still looked good from a distance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, best, yeah, it's very eye catching. <laughs> Actually, there, there's quite a few uh, PC case uh, manufacturers that aren't like so much mainstream, more more like in like the uh, Chinese market base uh, case manufacturers that no one really hears of, but they have. If you look at some of these uh, manufacturers' lineup, you would swear that they're actually in-win cases because a lot of them are basically duplicated, like uh, from our 900 series that has like the aluminum shell or you know the Infinity display. Same exact mm -hmm. thing. It looks exactly the same, but <laughs> they they basically just slap on a, a new uh, a new logo and it, they call it theirs. So <laughs> it, must you can find annoying. them if you, if you look hard enough. It's just, you know, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting when you see these products. One time somebody showed me, uh, I, I believe it was a D-Frame Mini, and I thought, I thought for sure it was a D-Frame Mini. I thought it was ours. And I was like, oh, nice build, man. And he goes, oh, this isn't mine. And I just saw this on a, on a website, and uh, I don't think it's in wins either. And I take a closer look, and I was like, oh. No, there's a there's a slight difference, but it's just ever so slight. Something is a uh, myth. Yeah. yeah, like if you took a quick glance at it, you're like, oh, I guess that is different. See, I, I remember at one point, I think it was a case mod where somebody basically took the concept of the D of the D frame and then they built it from scratch and they used it for uh, like water cool routing, and I thought that was interesting. <laughs> because that's, oh that's yes, different. yes. But yeah, they're, they're changing it, uh, changing up uh, the function aspect of it. That I can respect. What can you do though? I mean, can you do anything about that, or are you just like, well, that's just part of the game? It depends. Like, uh, there are some times where we'll be like, we'll let that go, and then there are other times where it's like, you know, you you can't help but call them out on it because, you know, it's like, dude, you just like, uh, is there any originality in your thought process there at all? And so, most of the time, it's not. It was my original thought to rip off this product from this company. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry to interrupt, but um, so I know with the Chinese market, the whole sort of copyright is very loose. Um, yes. Have you ever had that issue with a case manufacturer being extremely heavily inspired from your design in outside of China, say Europe, um, North America, etc. Not as much. I, it, it has happened in the past. Uh, I won't name any names, but uh, it, it, it has happened in the past. But I, I, I am proud to say that in like the Europe and US market area, there's, there hasn't been a lot. Like it's, I will say mainly the, the China manufacturers, they, uh, they, tend to be a little bit more uh, inspired. Mm. Okay. So um, another very interesting news piece brought to us by our man Frick here. I don't know if you've seen this, but um, let me see this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know which one is coming. But, I think so too. <laughs> yes. In South London, um, a man broke into someone's home and he uh, made two mayonnaise sandwiches. That is like the most British thing I've ever heard. No, it's just mayonnaise. Just bread and mayonnaise. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm saying. It's like y- y'all are already, or not you specifically, but the Brits already have toast sandwiches. So a mayonnaise sandwich, it doesn't seem that far off. <laughs> well, that's where you're wrong because it wasn't South London in the UK. It was in uh, KY. I don't know what state that is. Kentucky. Oh, oh, oh even better. <laughs> it's in Kentucky. <laughs> but, yes. We need our mayonnaise in the South. <laughs> Uh, it's a shame for uh shame chris isn't here he could weigh in on the kentucky you know traditional mayonnaise sandwich <laughs> i'm gonna be honest i don't know if i've ever had a mayonnaise sandwich before uh, <laughs> you're not missing out <laughs> wait it's not actually say, a thing is it i hope not <laughs> I, I mean, oh. I mean, the Brits also have the chip buddy, which is basically fries between two pieces of bread. Yeah, but that's actually good. It's fries between two sandwich. pieces of bread. <laughs> fries, mayonnaise between two pieces of bread. Okay, it's, okay, that's. I, I didn't. I didn't know about the mayonnaise. That's different. It's like hangover food. <laughs> um, it's more like if you're high or something. <laughs> <laughs> He can't get into anything else but bread and mayonnaise. It's not <laughs> that he made a mayonnaise sandwich. It's that he made two of them. <laughs> the first one was so good. Hey, that man that was on a mission. He was on a mission. I, I mean, he, he got what he wanted, I guess. <laughs> All right. I mean, I, 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 I feel like just not too long ago, I saw another article where somebody broke into somebody's house just so they could pet their dog. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> I find that a little more respectable than the mayonnaise thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's... Oh, could could you just imagine though? Like you hear someone breaking into your house, you're completely on edge, like he's quite scared. You come downstairs and there's just a bloke just slapping mayonnaise onto some bread and he's like, Yep, it's my second yep. sandwich. Hey, how's it going, buddy? <laughs> I, was I think at that point I'd just give him the mayonnaise and be like, okay, you can just take it and go. Yeah, you can keep it. <laughs> oh, goodness. You know what's crazy about that, though? I mean, as nuts as that is, Alex, is the, uh, the two, the, the, uh, the, well, you know, this could be a trend for all we know, people breaking into houses and making sandwiches of all kinds. Uh, have you ever thought to yourself, though, if that's what we're doing on this planet, well, what could they be doing on other planets? Perhaps, oh, <laughs> when the sky is above? Because what, what we've Hopefully. found out, the UFO <laughs> research group is implying, now that they're implying this, that they found some alien artifacts. Now, right. exactly okay. what they are, they haven't said. They haven't said just yet, but uh, they've, they've um, in, in so many words, uh, <laughs> they've obtained exotic material samples from UFOs. Wait, now, Frick, mm. the former Blink-182 singer. <laughs> Frick, this is not sounding very genuine here. I mean, the man, you know, he's probably encountered aliens more than you and me. Well, at least he didn't have to be part of that awful YouTube video they made. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> like, they, they really, yeah, they're like mid 40s or something, or close to 50, and then they released a YouTube video with basically a kid's doing a bunch of Fortnite dances. I mean, it's the epitome of like, hey there, fellow kids. <laughs> oh boy. well anyway. minecraft it's all play anyway so no, what is fortnite now what is said blink 182 singer doing with aliens frick oh he says they're coming and they're real huh? and oh, yeah very soon uh hmm. they will i'm not really sure how to put this in a, in a delicate manner but uh they will be part of our world <laughs> i what think it's not so much that, well, this guy believes in these things so much that he started an entire uh, organization around it. He's not just putting stuff up on Twitter. He founded an organization. It's called the Alien Research Group. Um, and this is definitely not for tax breaks. No, no. <laughs> okay, just checking. He's dedicated this entire, well, okay, it's called the uh, To the Stars Academy of Science and Arts. Well, it doesn't sound like it's about researching aliens, but it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, but I mean, his whole thing is that he also has three videos that he's obtained, and the Navy themselves mm-hmm. have confirmed these as real. They that the our U.S. Navy says, yeah, no, these are real. These are no, actual. But, okay, that thing actually kind of annoys me. So the new U.S. Navy said, yes, those are unidentified, 
And then everyone goes crazy and says, oh, they're aliens. No, the US Navy just said they don't know what that is. <laughs> Not that they are aliens. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, okay. Is so the aliens also record in like MP4 or something that he could get these videos. That he's actually got something that'll, that'll break this world apart. No, no. <laughs> no. no we have be a honest. non-believer <laughs> in our presence. <laughs> oh, God, no. How does Tom DeLong of Blink-182 ever lie to you, Alex? Why did... <laughs> <laughs> what reason do you have to trust him? Why should I trust him? Be be well, why shouldn't you? <laughs> Better he's question. Tom DeLolita from Tom <laughs> DeLonghi from Blink-182. <laughs> <laughs> he is that, yes, indeed. I'm just saying, <laughs> It, it's it's altogether a guaranteed fact that we are not the only life in the universe. I mean, there's there's no way that we are. It's just not possible. So the the option is either one, aliens are gonna be coming, or two, aliens are already here. It's one of those two things. No, no, you're missing the distinct third option, which is my I think my favorite theory. That we is, are we're just no, no, no. Okay, that's option four, I guess. <laughs> no, option three is the aliens are aware of us, have looked at us, and just have noped away. <laughs> that's probably very likely. Uh, <laughs> so, sorry. speaking of things that are very near and dear to us, I actually want to specifically talk about today oh, and yes. the holiday that 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 is today for us. Yes. Um, working individuals uh, that is today being national coffee day <laughs> johnny i have to ask as um what what do you think of the pumpkin spice latte <laughs> the famous psl <laughs> oh god psl oh, um, oh boy <laughs> i'm not sure what's gonna be more outrageous with my answer the fact that i don't like pumpkin spice lattes or the fact that I don't like coffee in general. What about coffee? Oh, oof. <laughs> I, I kind of I anticipated the groans. <laughs> I have been told numerous times that if I could have a, a coffee pot directly fed into an IV, that that would be me. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I think I might have insulted you again. No, no, you're fine. For there now. are many people who are allowed to have wrong opinions. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so yeah, today is supposed to be National Coffee Day, apparently. Apparently, um, and uh, absolutely no one has noticed, which is great. And no one <laughs> has made know. any advertising. I don't know I if you've seen say, these the things. Starbucks email that I got today said otherwise. Uh, which I is and it's hilarious. I can't stand Starbucks, and I haven't been there in a long while. But yet I still get well, their emails. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've actually, in honor of this day, I've, I've gathered together a few coffee facts that oh, I found boy. fascinating. And okay. one of them is actually almost unbelievable until I looked into it, and it turns out it is true. Uh, did you know that there's only two states in the United States that actually produce coffee? Well, That's it. Let's produce see. coffee. Well, like have harvesting of actual coffee beans. Okay, That's that it. There's only two states. One of them I is I think Hawaii. one's Hawaii. Yeah, one's Hawaii, and the other yes. is California. That's okay, it. I'm not surprised. Okay, I was not thinking California. Places. That makes a bit of sense. Like, Hawaii makes sense. California, I guess. I would say only because of the humid, warm climate. It's probably in yeah. South Carolina. Yeah, like, it's also a, a issue trying to um, cultivate or grow coca beans, I think. You need to have that same climate as well as bananas. Especially right. with the, um, no, dude, the, what's that disease that was on the Cavendish banana that kind of destroyed it or was it on the plantain or something? No, I, no, no, I think you, I think you're right. Yeah. But that is now spread over to the banana we eat now. And what's the disease? yeah. And there's nothing you can do about it. Apparently like there's no <laughs> cure for it. There's no anything. It's just the banana plant dies. And I think quite a few people are predicting that we're going to have a massive banana crisis. What a, what a world. <laughs> banana crisis. Who ever heard of such a thing? You well, know what? They, I, I, I fear that day. Well, they almost <laughs> all grow in the Amazon, which is also on fire. Yay. Oh. Yes. Oh. 
um, yeah, the disease is spreading throughout there. And there's like a few banana plant plantations in Central Africa, but, you know, it's a little bit violent there. And there's some in America, but a lot of people are predicting bananas to become a luxury good, which is going to be weird. That, that's going to be a really sad day, honestly. I like yeah. the idea of underground banana bread markets. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> banana bread dealers. They're right. Just like these speakeasies where you have to be invited into and there's like just, just a big pile of banana bread on the table. It's like 50 bucks a slice. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I think one of my favorite banana facts is, you know, like, you know, like uh, the banana flavored runts, right? Uh, the, the hard oh, yeah. candy. Yeah, that, yeah, that flavor is based off of an extinct banana. Oh, I actually oh. really like that because a lot of people go, oh, you know, that's, oh, that's fake banana flavor. Or no, whatever. no, it's just a banana that you, you will never see in your lifetime. The banana they still exist. You can still get them. Yeah, you but can they, buy them. They're just very expensive. Yeah, that's what's ah. going to happen to the current banana. They do exist, but they're See, that, rare. that makes me very sad. I, I grew <laughs> my, my Caribbean blood is, is going to regret that day. <laughs> I weep for the banana. I cry for the banana. I cry for the banana. <laughs> I yearn for it. You yearn for the banana? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I do want to uh, do another tech topic real quick. Uh, specifically, Razer is joining on uh, the foldable phone trend that we all love and hate. <laughs> oh, Motorola <laughs> Razer. Yes, well, thank not you. The scooter, not the scooter company. No, see, you know what? I, I changed my mind. No, I want the scooter company to make foldable phones now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just like a little bit of quick off topic. Um, it's kind of crazy how Razer scooters are coming back as like a meme. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't think they're co really coming back, though. It's like it, they've been in BMX for a while. No, <laughs> like I've seen them in downtown Toronto. People oh. riding Razer scooters. <laughs> That's that's kind of neat, actually. It's All right, really so back to weird. folding phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it looks like uh, they are targeting a summer launch date. No, no, no. They were targeting a summer launch date. It didn't happen, but uh, it, yep, it looks like we're going to get a folding screen phone from Motorola with the Razer brand. Last. And it will be a, there's no price for it. The only speculation that it's going to be above or in the $2,000 price range. And there's no real details. I guess let's get everybody's opinion on folding phones. Uh, let's start with Johnny here on this one. <laughs> yeah, Johnny, what, what phone do you currently use? And what is your take on the folding phone? Uh, currently, I'm rocking a Note 9. Uh, oh, yeah. I love the Note Good news. Man. So yeah, better than I, the Note 10. I don't know if you've uh, seen the downgrade that the Note 10 is, which is... Yeah, I, I, was, I was actually thinking that the 10, like I was kind of worried that the 10 was going to uh, be like a really good phone and I wanted to hold out for it. And I'm so glad I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I find it kind of crazy they removed the 3.5 mil jack from the Note. Yeah, like, that was stupid. I, I think I think the 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 big not only the three and a half jack but uh, on the Note Nine they ditched that uh, the front firing speakers that they had in the bezel for the curved screen and the full screen phone if if I rem am rem remembering correctly did they Jesus Christ yeah no yeah. no it's like it, it's basically an over glorified S10 at this point yeah you could say that basically yeah, with the with the pen. Yeah. What's your take but, on the Galaxy Fold and the folding phones? I'm not going to lie. I'm really intrigued because I like the thought of the foldable phones. I think it's it, it, it has like the potential for a bigger display that I think we all would appreciate. And it could be really useful if, you know, executed correctly. However, I do think it's a couple of generations away from it being to where we're all expecting it to be and i i don't fault any company that's currently producing these or at least trying to produce them for having like a few eh, kind of uh you know Mistetsal. product at the moment yeah but you know they got they got to make something eventually in order yeah. to you know correct you know these products for the future so personally i like them 
Would I get one at the moment? Probably not. Okay. So so what if I were also to mention that the Galaxy Fold does not have a headphone jack as well? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I would, so much, it has so much space. <laughs> like, it's not waterproof. There's no argument. Like, I, I, I would say that we are definitely, or th- this group here is definitely in the, vocal, uh, in the vocal sector that is absolutely pissed that the headphone jack is going away. <laughs> that being said, I have like the most basic phones ever. So, well, you also just quiet. spent eleven hundred dollars on a uh, uh, on an iPhone eleven. So there's that too. If that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> one thing I Shame. do hope, yeah, one thing I do hope <laughs> doesn't stick with these phones is that they're all coming out at very like ludicrous. I mean, I get it. It's like it's cutting edge technology. Three thousand dollars for the the Galaxy Fold. I really hope that doesn't stick because I know the Galaxy Fold is actually a lot of people are buying it because they want, you know, the absolute bleeding edge of technology. I just hope it doesn't kind of go, oh, you know, we can charge this much. And then that kind of sits around the 2000 to $3,000 range for folding phones. I think I alluded to it last week, uh, but I, I remember reading a study that was done on uh, the likelihood of customers purchasing a new phone. And there was one point where people were buying new phones every year. Uh, on average, people purchasing high-end phones, I think it, it was just every generation they would get the new one. And I think the study was just recently performed either late last year or early this year. And now the average uh, lifespan of these newer phones, these flagship model phones, is people are holding on to them anywhere from two to three years due to um, marginal performance increase, marginal feature increase, and uh, just the exponential price increase that we've been seeing lately. So I'm thinking as we keep seeing this occur where people are holding onto their phones for longer because they can't justify spending another $1,000 on a phone that only gives you marginal improvement. Um, I even feel the prices will come down only to meet or to bring the demand back. I hope so because I stuck onto my iPhone 6 for five years, four and a half years. Five years? I was yeah, on my was... Galaxy S4 up until I got my uh, Galaxy S8. Wow. Like, Biggest reason I upgraded was actually because, well, the iPhone 6 camera is, it's, I mean, it matches about, you know, the Game Boy color. (laughs) (laughs) And it's, I think that like a lot of phones do get to a point where it's just apps do not support it or anything like that. Discord would lag when typing. WhatsApp would just disconnect all the time. And um, my phone was old enough that I couldn't get LTE because they'd moved on from all the bands that the phone supported. I, I must I must out myself here for a moment, but one of the, my primary reasons for upgrading my from from my S4 to my S8 is one, uh, replacement batteries were becoming hard to come by for cheap, and two, uh, Pokemon Go was no longer supported on my S4. <laughs> yeah. So I am absolutely outing myself on that one. <laughs> yeah, I just hope that. Um... Huawei and Xiaomi can actually bring some pretty great folding phones to drive the price down. Well, I mean, anything, it, anything better than the Fold is probably a step in the right direction. Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with Xiaomi and uh, Huawei because they used to be the very budget alternative that, you know, felt crap in the hand. And it had the features, but not really, but it was cheap. And now Xiaomi and Huawei are like out innovating if you will samsung you know uh, oneplus htc uh, etc they're just OnePlus trying the ads for that long they just OnePlus got plus and yeah one plus is they were great and then they got lazy like frick said <laughs> but we'll see and hopefully right. I, I, yeah so i think we're uh, actually getting uh, close to the wrapping up point i think andrew's actually had one last question for you johnny Shoot. Yes, I do. Um, can I have a free case? <laughs> <laughs> Just like, you know, okay. I was kind of waiting for this. <laughs> but what if I... Um, wait, wait, hold on. Hold on wait, wait. I, I have perfect time with this. 
what if I told you? You can. Oh, that's good. So uh, I send you my address. I was, I was trying. <laughs> I was trying to. I was trying to be Morpheus. <laughs> I, I totally failed, but I tried. We appreciate the effort. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you you can actually, uh, you know, get a free case from Inwin, our Inwin eight hundred five, the same case that I have, by the way. Um, oh this is uh, actually MSRP's for one hundred and fifty dollars, and it could be yours free on the uh, on the forums section of your guys' website. So um, the uh, details are in the uh, the post. Uh, will there be a a link oh. here in the in the podcast? Yes, yeah, we we'll will put it in the podcast description as well, where you guys can you guys can enter. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, how it works is basically you just uh, become a member of the forums, and um, that's basically the requirement. You can follow uh, our social media as well as the forums' uh, social media as well to uh, to increase your odds of of winning. And like I said, this is a hundred fifty dollar case that you can win for free. All you got to do is enter. And uh, once you enter, hopefully uh, you'll you'll win. The only catch is, unfortunately, we're kind of limited on where we could ship it because um, this is coming from our U.S. branch and not from our headquarters. So you, um, it's only available for the U.S. and Canadian region. Yeah, and it's it's seriously a really stunning looking case. It's gorgeous. Um, yeah. It's an 805. How can you go wrong with that? It's got that classic yeah. look to it. And solid build quality, of course. So, I mean, yeah. honestly, I'm just, I, I just love the brushed aluminum. Oh, yeah. Uh, I actually quite like oh, the yeah. front, front panel, to be honest with you. But, yeah. yeah. So, it will be in the podcast description, as well as, um, obviously, the forum. Give you all the details there, how to sign up and enter the contest. And hopefully, the Inwin 805 can be yours. You can win an in win. <laughs> From Mr. Wynn. Hey, yeah, yeah, there it is. Mr. Yeah. Wynn, you have one job, and how did you not manage to slip that in? <laughs> you for God's sakes. I, I actually get that pitch to me all the time where people are like, how about you say in it to win it? I'm like, because it's oh, been gosh. outplayed, dude. Oh, uh, yeah, I appreciate oh, it. It's, it. <laughs> it's like it's, it's been outplayed already. Like, like, no more, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, that's about going to wrap it up for this evening. So, well, thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for having me.